Hi everyone, how's it all going? Um, so yeah, last week was eventful. Um, I took my son go-karting on the Wednesday at five in the evening, came back, and you're thinking, all right, just let's put the go-kart back away because we haven't got anywhere really to store it other than in the workshop, the spray room. So I parked up, I got my wife to quickly pop out the van as I was parking on the driveway to ask us to unlock the workshop and she ran back and said, there's a fire. So we came back, well, I, I jumped out the van, um, had a look and the, literally the whole workshop and the spray room was completely black with smoke. I couldn't see in it and there was a fire going on near the table saw itself. Um, so have a look at the pictures. I'm just going to scroll through five or ten pictures just to show you how bad it was. Um, it was literally panic. I was thinking the whole workshop was burning down. Didn't know why, and went in there to try and put the fires out, um, try and find the fire, fire extinguishers, um, couldn't see anything, I had torches, put the lights on, still couldn't see through the smoke, um, but eventually I got some fire extinguishers, tried to put it out, um, fire brigade came within about five minutes and started putting it out, but I didn't have time to film or anything like that, um, what was going on, I was just panicking hoping that there was something to salvage. I didn't know how big it was, um, what was actually on fire, because I couldn't see through. I could see fire in, through the smoke, and it was the table saw direction, but I couldn't see anything else. I thought the whole place was up. Um, so yeah, fire brigade came, asked them to be as careful as I could because I had loads of birch ply in here. Um, it's quite a bit where I've had all my tools, I've got my bikes my other go-kart and yeah so this video is all about showing you that and showing you how bad it was um and how i've got over the problem you know how i fixed it up um and getting back to normal trying to sort of get the workshop back in order and to be honest i don't exactly know how it started i'm thinking that is down to me cutting a load of birch um not a blunt saw but it wasn't brand new um, on the table saw, I'm not sure if some embers just dropped in because at the bottom of my saw it turns into a pile of dust. The extractors on table saws aren't the greatest, are they? Um, not sure whether it was that or whether the motor had gone on me, which is a bit weird because, well, you watch the video and you'll see. Um, so yeah, unsure. All I say is be safe. If you do cut a lot of timber on the table saw, just before you leave, make sure you Make sure nothing's smouldering because at the moment my security camera hasn't picked up how it started. Um, and I still haven't figured out how it started either. Um, other than that, um, the pile of dust next to the table saw um, went up and the bench and the, the extension table and the side table sort of went up. And ultimately that was where the fire started. So, yeah. Have a look through the pictures and then it will turn into how I've salvaged the situation. Right, so we spent the whole day cleaning and we got to this. Oh, it's a little bit bright. Still dirty. Ceiling is a nightmare to wash. Sean's managed to get it up to that, but that's taken a couple of hours just to do that. So what we've decided to do is just respray the whole workshop, we're not going to bother with this side, over this side it's all OSB which is quite fortunate. All the racks were cleaned, floors cleaned up to this point but still need to just clean the floor over here and put those um, little pipe insulators back on the racks. But other than that it's done in here. But yeah now is the opportunity to Fill all these cracks that we've got. Revamp the workshop a little bit. We have got a problem in the ceiling where there's a little leak coming through and we've noticed it's sagging um, from the top. So I think as the leak has been um, seeping through over the last, I don't know, a few months or whatever it is, it's sort of ruined the joists, the rafters, shall I say. And um, we're gonna have to rip that part of the ceiling down where you can see we haven't washed. So that's unfortunate. We're gonna leave that for another day though. Uh, so yeah, so Sean's just taken up. We've got all these 
We've got a box of this masking plastic, uh, masking paper. We've got all these dispensers because when I spray on site, it's so handy. We've got this dispenser here. Let you just pull it out and then you rip it off of this. It's so handy for just going around the whole thing. It, it applies the masking tape for you. Wrap it around, a little bit of masking, scrunch it in the middle, masking tape in the middle, job done. So we're gonna go around, mask up all the, all the sockets, the windows, skylight, speakers in the ceiling, lights in the ceiling. And we're gonna stop the masking tape here. That's what Sean's doing. You can see the masking tape he's putting up. Yeah, he's masking there. Um, so we can then just get our plastic to hang off of that because we're not spraying past this point. Um, and we're gonna just, when we spray the walls, we'll just put a, a big bit of plastic down on the floor here. So as we're spraying, it just hits the plastic. I'm not gonna mask up the entire floor. Oh, look at it. That's what happened at the fire. Oh. And the table saw. Let's walk around. That's where the fire was around there. But not too sure. Doesn't actually look like the motor has been touched. You can't see it. The motor looks intact, so who knows? It might just be the shell. Give it a couple of days, because when the fire brigade were here, they completely soaked it. Um, so give that maybe a week or so to dry, see if it turns on. If it doesn't, it's a new table saw. If it does, give it a sand up and just clean it until we can find another table saw, because ultimately we need to get another one. Um, we had a load of birch in here, as you can see what it's done to it. So that is, let me show you a clean piece. Right, well, that's a clean piece there underneath. That's what it should look like. And that's what it's like now. The smoke and the, da the damage from the smoke. But as you can see here, we did sand it with some 120 and it's come back to brand new, so they might be salvageable because we've got about 1,200 pounds worth of birch in here, all stacked up. It's half finished as well, so the amount of work we put into it. All of this was the same, but luckily, like shown you here, we got the stack. Everything that was inside the stack shouldn't be damaged because it's covered by one another. That's handy, but it's the top pieces. So when we spray, we're just gonna put everything to one side, move this bench in, we've got everything on the inside, cover it up with dust sheets, and get the old airless sprayer out. Um, we're gonna use this one over here, my 695. Let's turn this light on. And it absolutely stinks of smoke in here. Every time I come in, I realize how, how bad the fire was, it absolutely reeks. Windows in here where you couldn't even see through them, all the tar on the windows. You could probably still it, see it's still sort of black in the corners. Um, I don't know what else I can show you. It's just black everywhere and even with this door closed. The fire happened in the workshop and with these sliding doors closed, I couldn't even, when I discovered the fire, I couldn't even walk in here. I was tripping over everything to look for the fire extinguishers to try and put it out. But yeah, ended up having to just get out because I couldn't even breathe and fire brigade came and I'm here for a couple of hours. Um, so I'll be anyway, getting sidetracked as I do. I'm um, going back to the spray and this is what I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna use my trusty old white contract silk, which I like using, it's gray paint. Um, I won't be using a fine finished tip. Let me go back and show you the tips. Um, I'm not going to be using fine finish, which are the green ones. I will be using a blue tip because that's for painting walls. You can see loads of greens in there. Um, I'll be using one with a blue tip anyway. There's not much difference in looking at them. Oh, there we go. They're the wall ones. But they, they, they don't atomize as fine, so I get good coverage I can do maybe a 12 inch, 14 inch, which is maybe like 250, 300 mil fan width um, on the walls. So in theory, I'll probably go for about three or four of those tubs, 10 liters, 30, 40 liters to do two coats in here. Um, but one coat should really only take me half an hour in here. 
It's how long is this workshop? Eight meters, yeah. Eight, eight and a half, something like that. Eight and a half meters, and about four and a half wide. So I'll work that out in square meters. It's quite a lot. Um, and it's all in the preparation at the moment, as Sean's doing, because we want the paint to stick. We want to get as much of the smoke off, so the smoke doesn't come, the, the tar doesn't come through the paint. We're hoping it doesn't. And like I said, we're going to be just filling all the holes that we can see any dents. You can see everywhere dents and chips. Now's the time just to try and get rid of that, make it as nice as possible, brine it up. Um, and yeah. By the end of the day, hopefully, we should be able to start spraying. Because, like I said, it only takes a couple of hours for this bad boy. Um, so, yeah. Let's um, get all the masking done and hopefully come back to the spraying part. Alright, so if you have a look round, we've got to the point where we've washed all the walls. Um, and we've prepared everything. All the floors are clean. Look around the bottom. we put paper down with duct tape up against the floor. Master windows, all the furniture, I've still got that little bit left to do. Um, skylights I still need to do, just been a bit lazy. I, I just started spraying, so follow me over here. This is the bit I've already done. I need to have one coat, just all the way around these edges, everywhere that looks nice and bright is what's just been done, and also the front of the workshop doors. They've been done, but I should have realistically just finished off the masking, but I was just getting bored of it, I just wanted to crack on. Um, covered up all my work and all my benches, table saw. And what I've done is set up my 695, my Braco 695. Um, I've got a little fan here. So I turn that fan on and it gets the airflow blowing this way. So what that does is stop all the overspray going into my spray room, otherwise I want to close this off. You see this puffing out like that once that fan's on. Um, so that's the air supply sorted, so we're not getting any other spray in the next door. And I've got the I've got the 695 here, the grey coat. Um, this is 99% of the time used for spraying my MDF. But, you know, it's a brilliant machine, it can do anything. It can just spray out so much paint in one hit. I've got a fan of about that wide, so as I'm spraying the walls, it's covering so, so quickly. Um, so I've got my contract silk paint in there, as you can see, it's just a wipeable um, emulsion. Um, gives it a little bit of a sheen. And I've got it set at 2000 PSI with a blue tip. Let me just show you my tip. And you can see my gun set up as well. I put a little lance on it, about 300 mil. It just makes it so much easier. So when you're doing long surfaces, the gun, with the gun without this on, if that tip was right at the front, you'd have to literally do this. You know, and if you're short like me, then it's a nightmare. But with this, I could do one stroke of the ceiling. Ceiling, uh, sorry, I could do one stroke of the wall, carry on with the ceiling, walk across, do the ceiling, walk back, come back down. And I'll give you an example of that. So, like I said, I've got it set 2000 PSI. I should have my mask on, and I have been having my mask on. But because I need to talk, I'm just going to just do a quick example. Um, and this tip is a 515, by the way, it's a blue tip. It's not a fine finish tip like I usually use. It's for walls and ceilings. Start the bottom, and every time I do one, I have half overlap. So I'll go to fly, I'll the Yeah, I won't do the whole ceiling. Just for the sake of the video. I usually go all the way to the end. See how, how much it covers. I've masked up all the lights so I can literally spray over my lights. I've filled and sanded all the walls where they're cracked. And you can see the difference it makes the brand new white paint on these smoke walls. Make sure it's brand new again. That's where a crack was on the wall there, it's been filled. Also done the sockets, crack the sockets up so I can spray directly over those. And yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. I set 
say another half an hour, and I've had the whole room done. I mean, if there was nothing in my way, I'd literally be doing the ceiling in one big hit, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, all the way, that's 10 minutes for the ceiling. Then I'd just go round and I'd just be doing the walls all the way. But because I've got all these bits in the way, I'm just doing it where you can see this bit of the ceiling. I did this all in one hit. So I did a wall, went up, walked along, finished it there, walked back, back down. But because I've got this in the way, I'm doing half at a time. Uh, so once I've done all of that, I'm, I'm, at the moment I'm leaving the skylights to last, like I said, because I'm being lazy, I haven't been bothered to take them up, so I'm just spraying around. Once I've finished, I'm going to just mask them up and just give them a blast with a green tip by and finish. Because the blue tip, the paint comes out so fast, that a big massive burst of air, I don't want to blow all this um, paper off and plastic off. Uh, what I need to be aware of is as I spray, what it does with the masking tape, it, make, masking tape, it makes it wet. So as I've sprayed it, what it does is it's got a tendency to lift. Uh, just be aware when you're doing the second coat, once it's all dry, just to firm those bits of tape back down. But like I said, I've got my fan on most of the time, getting the airflow going. It's only a little one, but that pulls the plastic and you know you can see the air supply airflow coming this way. I'm not really worrying about the floor because it's absolutely filthy as it is, it's got a big burn hole and all this over spray after a week of work it will literally just come off on its own. Um, but yeah, apart from just finishing the spraying off and just putting the tools back, I think the workshop is back to new again apart from, well, the saw, if we can get that working. Right, so this is what I've got one coat and it's gone on really thick. I could probably get away with just one coat. You can see some of the stains coming through. This part of the ceiling's coming down, this this strip, because I think there's something wrong with the rafters, like I said. Uh, so that's a little bit oily still. You can see the oils coming through, the, the water damage. But there isn't much more yellow stains on the wall. I was expecting a lot more. Um, because, you know, smoke damage, you know, the tar build up, all the black smoke, even though we cleaned it as best as we can. Um, but it's really good coverage. I managed to do all the skylights. Like I said, they were all smoked, so that's going to need um, probably stain blocker around there. But I used about 30 to 35 litres. I think I went through three and a half tins or three and a half um, containers, which are 10 litres each of this trade contract silk. Um, because that's what I had on it before, originally when I first sprayed it seven years ago, and it's absolutely tough as nails. You know, you lean wood up against it constantly and uh, materials bashing it all the time and it really did last um, and stand the test of time. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, get back on a sprayer, turn it on and work my way around from this end again. One last coat because I need to get the workshop back into shape tomorrow. Um, sort out the table saw and put all the benches back because work needs to be done. So I'm going to go and start spraying. Done. Right, now is the time to see if this will work. Drum roll. Oh, pancake's coming to oh, see. pancake, go away. Right, I've turned the saw blade by hand a few times to make sure it's got free play. <laughs> Ready? Does it, does I've it just turned it off, obviously. Sound like bearings sound a bit noisy. Bearings. Uh, uh, Alright, well, it starts. The main thing. But would you want to cut something with it? No. no. Not right now. Maybe let it run for a bit, see if it sorts itself out. If it doesn't, then it's bearings, isn't it? Or maybe something inside the motor. So, are you still going to try and use it? No, oh, I need to put things back. If you have a look round, it's all been sprayed. 
just sorting out the benches, putting all the benches back, got this little pile left to do. This is all our birch ply. Now we've got a stack. We can't stack anything against walls because it's been painted a couple of days ago and I will leave it at least a week for this paint to cure before I leave things against it. Look, follow me. Just cleaning up this now. That sprayer which we just sprayed with will go back in its place over there. Sean is literally just finishing off this bit of flooring. Cleaned up the cabinets and the bike and the go-kart are outside ready to be cleaned. Um, so yeah, we are getting close to having it back to close to what we had before. All this over spray that you see on the floor, that's going to come up. No, as you walk on it, it comes off on its own, so it's fine. So that's what we're doing now, just putting everything back in place, putting the benches back into position, put the table saw there, clean the table saw. And I will then show you what it's like completely finished. Alright, so I've also got the table saw top to think about, which is all rusty. So what I've done, covered it in WD-40, let it soak for 10 minutes. Got an old bottle sander with P120 and I've just gone over it and over it and over it. Um, until you see all the rusty, um, as well until you saw the oil turn all rusty. You can see here, just gonna wipe it off. Get some blue roll. Just wipe it off. Uh, it's still a little grubby. I could keep on going, but you know, that's enough. It's absolutely fine. And it was really bad, this was. It's properly rusty. As all the water was sitting on it for a few days. So I'm going to just do that for the rest of it. Clean up all these rails and wipe down the runners here. Clean up the back. Yeah, and then put it back in place over here. Right, so it's been a long, hard slog, but it's finally been finished, all done, and can't wait to get back working again. Um, it's been a while, it's been about four days to get to this stage, so let's flip the camera around and show you what we got. There we go. This is the spray room side. Floor's nice and clean. Racks all been cleaned, sorted out over here, cleaned all the surfaces over here, everything everything in this whole workshop spray room was covered in black smoke and tar dust, everything. Clean that. All these were absolutely covered, so they've been taken out and degreased and washed. They need another spot to live. I need to build something outside for these. They will go out pretty soon. Spindle was cleaned. Luckily, all these machines behind here, the uh, mortar stuff and iron on edge and bandsaw all covered up so they should be okay all this work over here has been cleaned didn't touch the spray booth because obviously that's dirty anyway and here we go we've got the workshop side all the white on the floor is just over spray that will come off in a few weeks everything's been cleaned the rack's been cleaned out we didn't bother cleaning all the osb because it's too much hard work we need to sand it all back if we want to brighten it up again. Um, all the black, you look just below the tracks, it's all black there, and that's where the smoke was getting through to come in um, the spray room side. So look how bright it is compared to what it was before when it just happened. Two coats of silk paint. Saw isn't too bad. Cleaned it up, a little bit of fire damage there, but the saw table cleaned up nicely. Um, got to sort the bearings out on it, but it does work for now, which I'm happy about. Um, and all this birch survived. You can see all the dirt on it. So Sean's just going through all the pieces that were already machined and finished. So he's going back over them with P240 with the, the orbital and um, hand paper to bring them back up. Um, put them once he's done then they'll go in a pile of done components and then he'll be just dropping on uh, these pieces which all um, smoked as you can see look at the paper it looks like the drawings have been here since the 60s uh, I thought that was quite funny but really chuffed how nice it's come out have a look 
So I guess the moral of the story is, if you've got any dust in your workshop before you leave, just make sure you've just left it safe. Turn off your electrics. If you've got any, if you've been doing a lot of cutting on your table saw, your plane or anything like that, make sure there's nothing smouldering before you leave. Because I think ultimately it's come down to uh, um, cutting on the table saw. I don't know how, it's never happened to me before, just beware. But overall, it's a happy ending. The workshop didn't burn down. Um, and we're back to um, a nice new place to work in. And um, yeah, getting cracking on. We've got about five or six big jobs on, so we've got to get cracking on. But um, yeah. And not a very positive video, but a video, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Ciao for now.